What's up, y'all? My name is John Hart. I'm an artist whose music mostly falls somewhere in the indie country space. I recently left Nashville for some peace and solitude in the country because I felt like the music scene there was kind of trying to force me into a box that wasn't authentically me. So if you're someone that's craving authenticity and you don't really know where to find it, you're in the right place. I'm really glad you're here. My goal with these videos and this channel is to be transparent about what it looks like to pursue something that you're passionate about and to provide something of value that exists outside of the highlight reel of social media and the goal is to just bring you into my life and talk about stuff that's that's on my mind and kind of document what life looks like. In this video, I'm going to talk about how Nashville changed me. I'm currently in Mississippi, about to head back to the farm. I played a couple things down here, hung out with my family for a couple days, and now I'm headed back. I really spend a lot of time inside during the week, kind of head down, really working on making stuff um, to take you know, full advantage of the, of the time and the space that I have out here. But the weekends are fun because I get to get outside and uh, do, do a little more in, in like a more relaxed way. So my brother came in town. I'm going to show you what that looks like. Um, don't judge the state of my truck. My mom sent me back with a bunch of stuff to give back to him. So that's why it's, it's loaded down and, and messy like it is. But yeah, again, glad you're here. Let's get into it. Got a lot going on this weekend, so starting the day off with a little coffee before the morning run. Make sure we get it going right. Drove to the top of the driveway by the road to run. It was kind of gray and rainy this morning, but still a good way to start the day. When I got done, the closest neighbors that I have were outside, and I got to meet them for the first time, which was awesome. They were great. We talked for like 30 minutes, and I let them know that their dog, who literally jumps over the fence to come run with me, is not bothering me at all. It actually makes it way more fun. So the horseshoe man is coming this morning, so I gotta bring the horses up uh, from across the road and get them in for when he gets here so he can get their feet right. Um, it's cold and wet. It's been raining the last couple days. Um, so glad for a break in the rain, but it is cold this morning. Had a couple stragglers, but got everybody in. Actually had to walk out and get one that decided not to come in with the rest of them, but got everybody in, got them fed, got them in stalls so that they could be ready to go when the farrier got here to put shoes on a few of them and then just kind of trim the rest of them up. Sunday, my brother Mead decided to come and hang out for the night. It ended up being a beautiful day after a pretty rainy weekend, so we decided to pipe a few golf balls in the pasture. We got kind of tired of walking them down to find them, so we took a few chops at this little training thing we found. You know, sometimes there's just nothing like a good day out on the links. We decided to cook over an open fire tonight, which I've been wanting to do for a while. So we got this grate loaded up in the back of the truck, and once it was loaded and ready to go, we took it down to the house, to put it around the fire pit, and then we gathered a bunch of wood. Uh, it takes a lot of wood to keep a fire hot enough to cook a whole meal over, so um, just a heads up, if you're planning on doing that, make sure that you have plenty of wood to keep the fire hot. Got the fire rolling, put the cast iron on there to cook the vegetables in. I didn't end up videoing the meal after it was done, which I wish I would have, but it was one of the best meals I've had in a long time. 
All right, so I'll be honest with y'all. I've tried to take this like five times, and it's really, really frustrating. Like, I just did a whole take of this, and for some reason, it's just not on my phone. I guess I didn't hit record. I don't really know. The first time I did it, um, I was sitting on my truck bed, and my head was like cut off at the top. I took it again, and then it ended up being like a crotch shot, and my dad told me it made my knees look big and my head look small. I just tried to take it again inside, like in the studio, and there was like a weird cable issue after the fact that I noticed and some nasty feedback so I'm just going to go through it out here and hopefully this works but I had to step outside because I got pretty frustrated but and I got my little Apple microphone so hopefully it sounds okay but you know what we're just going to go with it so I talked some in the last video about kind of how some aspects of my personality didn't really mesh with the way that the music scene and creatives kind of function as a whole sometimes and it, today I want to talk about how kind of the industry specifically can kind of encourage or manipulate people into compromising parts of who they are in order to be successful and that can look like you know adding things to your personality traits that aren't really there because you think that that's what you need to do to appease people or justifying things that you do or I mean even just compromising the kind of music that you want to make because somebody puts um, the potential of success on the table and I'll say this I get it like there's no music is a little bit different than a lot of other careers because there are things that you can do like play shows get really good at your instrument um, make music release music, network with with other artists and, and creatives and stuff. But there's still no guarantee of success because music is so subjective. And that, that's not to discredit the work that goes into, like, being a lawyer or, or a dentist or anything like that. Like, you, you can't just float your way through those things and expect to have a really good career. However, if you do, if you go to school and you apply yourself and you put the time in and you do the internships and stuff, then typically – you can at least make a sustainable career for yourself. So anyway, music's not that way. And to be very clear, I want to be recognized for the music that I make. Like I want this to be a significant part of how I make my living for the rest of my life. I want it to be sustainable. I want it to make sense to tour and to record and to put music out. So I get it. When somebody comes along that might offer you potential success in the form of connections or financial backing, it's very enticing, and I'm not saying it's wrong to consider those things, but very enticing to consider that and kind of whatever they're asking for along along with that. And I have seen people do that. I've seen it work out well for people. I've also talked to people that have gotten very successful really quickly, and after they get taken on by labels and stuff, like everything looks awesome on social media. They're playing big shows. They're, I mean, like I, I know somebody who – I ran into it at a coffee shop. It's probably been a year or so at this point, but like, you know, headlining stuff internationally and playing big festival slots. And I ran into him, and like, from a music, I mean, the dude definitely deserves the success that he has gotten. His music is awesome. He's a great guy. But I remember talking to him, and he, you know, had just so many people kind of clawing at his time and, you know, wanting to set him up with rights and set him up with this person, that person, and flying him out here to, to meet people and whatnot. And he told me that he was just trying to figure out how to basically preserve his soul in terms of, like, saying no to things that were just draining him creatively and emotionally. And um, that kind of put it into perspective because, like, you see the numbers shoot up and making more money and all this kind of stuff. And there's nothing nothing wrong with that. That That is, to be clear again, that's what I want as well. But I want to feel good about the way that that happens, even after it, it happens. And, I mean, anybody who's lived in Nashville, and especially anybody who's existed in the music scene in Nashville for a while, will tell you that there's a lot of bitter people walking around that have made a career out of music. And that's always been scary to me and kind of bizarre because I love music so much. And I made a commitment to myself a long time ago that, like, whatever it took to not get to that point is what I would do even at the cost of being successful. And, like, I'm not at the level of success that I would like to be right now. But there are a lot of people that have put a lot of years and a lot of time and effort and money into making a successful music career happen and, and have become more successful than 99.9% .9 
percent of people that ever pick up an instrument and are still miserable because of like bad relationships, bad tour experiences, not having much discernment on who to surround themselves with and how much to protect their emotional and mental and physical well-being, all of it. And it's real, and it's and, and I don't want that to, to be me. Now, with all of that being said, let's talk about how Nashville changed me. The first way is that it really didn't, and I'm sorry if that feels like clickbait. That's not the intention. The point being is that if you feel like you need to people please and bend the knee in order to pursue what you're passionate about, you don't. Um, I to, to be very vulnerable here, I'm not at the level of success that I hope that I would be at at this point. However, I still love making music, and I'm like hungry for for the success. And I feel like I finally kind of have vision for like how I want to execute that and and how I want to build what I want to build and what I want that to become. So so I can't really speak from a from a standpoint of credibility on like commercial success, but I do think I have some credibility to speak on how to be fulfilled in pursuing what you want to pursue. I know that it's true that if you stay true to yourself and you stand in your convictions, that you will be happier and more fulfilled in your pursuit of whatever it is that you're doing. If you can go to bed and wake up knowing that you've been true to yourself, you're always going to have that to fall back on. And it just it's good for your self-worth. And I think that even subconsciously, there's some awareness there that like you are being who you were intended to be and utilizing the gifts that you have to their fullest extent because that's why I think authenticity is important is that if you're not being if you're not being true to yourself you can't really be true to other people and the capacity for you to be fulfilled and to take pride in what you do I I think I believe can only reach a certain point so like I said I hope that that didn't come across as like clickbait I hope that that's encouraging because I really don't feel like Nashville changed me. Um, I, I, I'm i writing what I want to write. I'm making music the way that I want to make it. And I'm going to ride this thing out and see where it goes. And for a while, there were ways that I kind of played the game. And after a couple of years, I was like, this is stupid. I'm not going to do this. Um, it's, not, it's not worth it to me. So I hope that you can find some encouragement in that and some and some value in that and, and that'll give you some stuff to, to think through as you're pursuing whatever it is that that you're passionate about anyway if you made it this far thank you so much for watching if you have liked or commented or subscribed or messaged me about the la on the last couple of videos i really 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 appreciate it i love hearing from y'all on what you think about these videos and how you found value in them so thank you for that if you're new here and you want to like or subscribe or comment or share it, it means so much. I'm trying to build something here that will allow me to keep doing this. So thank you. Your support in those ways means so much. If you haven't talked to God today, talk to him. It won't hurt. I promise. And I will see you all in the next one.